if there was one thing I could do differently about that whole process, I would go and talk to someone right at the beginning because then I would have known I wasn't alone and that would have really helped the process. My name's Katrina, I'm a GP in Far North Queensland. I've been working in the top end of Australia for 25 years as a GP and I love the variety of the work I do. In early 2017, I, um, I was sitting at my desk at work and I opened my email inbox and there was an email from APRA and that email said that I'd been notified to APRA. I don't work for APRA. I'm not getting paid by APRA. I'm doing this because it was very painful for me and I know that if I'd been able to hear someone like me telling their story, I think I would have found it helpful. I thought notifications to APRA only happened to really bad doctors who did really bad things. And so when I was notified to APRA, it made me feel that I was tainted with this brush, the bad brush. The anxiety when there were long, long periods of not hearing anything back from APRA, I'm talking months at a time when I wouldn't hear a thing. To me that meant this was really serious and people were sitting there poring over the man's chart. What I know now is that the, the APRA manages complaints on a triaging basis just the same way we as health professionals do and that is that the, the most serious things get dealt with first. I wish I'd known that then because I would have worried less. The fact that it was all taking such a long time should have been reassuring, but for me it just increased my anxiety. I found my clinical practice changing so that I became um, much more anxious at work and would, I guess, over-investigate things. And every time I saw a patient who reminded me of the patient in the case, I would become highly anxious. And I started getting up in the morning. We were milking our dairy cow at the time and I'd get up at 5.30 and get the cow in and there was something about resting my head on her warm cow flank that, that just made the tears flow and I would find myself t filling the bucket with as much tears as milk and then I'd get my bucket of milk and go down to the kitchen and dry my eyes and get ready for work and I'd go back to work and I'd see the patients and I'd, I'd get more anxious again. And all the time that this was happening I knew I wasn't well. I, I knew that crying into a bucket of milk in the morning every morning was not a healthy thing. One of the reasons I didn't want to go and get help was, was my own sense of, of shame about having been reported to APRA. I didn't want my colleagues in our little town to know that I'd been reported to APRA because I guess I was afraid that they would think she must have done something wrong, you know where the smoke was fire in I wouldn't have been reported if there wasn't something and I, I, I was I was desperately afraid that they would judge me for it and the other reason was that I was afraid that I would be notified as being an unsafe practitioner because now I was depressed and that fear kept me from seeking help when I knew I needed it it wasn't until several months after the whole notification process had finished, it was over, that I realised it was still filling way too much of my thoughts. I, I couldn't let it go, I couldn't clear it out. And that was when I went and saw my GP at last. And telling him the story of that 12 months period was so relieving for me and allowed me to clear it all out of my head. That talking to my GP was intensely therapeutic. When I was going through the notification process, I was fortunate I had excellent support from my family and that was one of the things that kept me going through it all. But I'm also really conscious of the fact that not everybody has that same support and that there are some of us who are particularly vulnerable, maybe younger practitioners or people who are going through this for a second time or people who have problems at home and that as health practitioners we're at increased risk of suicide 
and this is a time when that risk is even higher, it's completely normal for a notification like this to make health practitioners feel miserable, completely miserable. Angry, frustrated, anxious, depressed. These are all a normal response to getting an APRA notification. What I'm hoping for is that practitioners will feel comfortable to talk to people about their notification knowing that this is something that happens to thousands of excellent practitioners every year. If there was one thing I could do differently about that whole process, I would go and talk to someone right at the beginning because then I would have known I wasn't alone and that would have really helped the process the whole way through. That would have helped me to, to, to feel much less hurt and traumatised by the process.